Could you tell me what is the origin of love from your research and exposure in the last decades? One of the things I found most interesting in this work is learning how many animals love. I kind of went into it thinking that humans were the only animal that you know had this. That's really not true. For a long time, there were some biologists who would say, oh, your dog doesn't really love you. Your dog just has learned, has evolved to mimic love so that you'll feed it, but it's not actually you know, experiencing anything like that. But now they have fMRI machines and they can do brain scans and they do brain scans on various animals when they're with their animal mate. And they do brain scans on people when we're with our mates. And there's the same pattern of neural activity in mammals, in some mammals. And so it really is pretty clear that animals do love. They call it something else, though. I think some of the confusion is that whenever it's an animal, we just tend to use the word bonding instead <laughs> of love. Maybe because we just still want to maintain some sense that we're somehow better or superior, so we want to have the special word for us. In any event, though, there's a lot of animals that have this kind of bonding. So it's pretty obvious when you look at this across hundreds of thousands of or tens of thousands of different species, and you get this relationship that why love evolved originally. And love is a system of motivation that gets parents to take care of their children and gets parents to cooperate with each other. So that's really what the function that it originally evolved for. Now, humans are, some biologists I've read say we're unique in this. Others say, no, there's just a small number of other animals that also do this. That we're one of the very, very few animals that has developed the ability to love outside of these reproductive families. So we have friends. The relationship between friends, we don't always use the term love, but psychologically, that's what it is. It's the same fundamental mechanism. In the same way that you know, romantic love has a sexual component and other kinds of love don't have that sexual component. Similarly, when there's a friend, the context changes the way we experience that love a little bit. But it is basically the same thing. And what this does for humans, it is, allows us to be really effective in working together with other people because you have trust in these other people and you cooperate really well with these other people and you come to their aid and they come to your aid when needed. And so this can happen just between individual friends or you get the same kind of bonding in a group. So if you live in a tribe, you may have this sort of allegiance to your tribe as a whole that connects you. And any sports coach will tell you that one of the first things they do on a sports team is they want to try and get the people on the team to really love each other because that kind of love within the team makes the team more effective. And that's one of the things that humans have done is they've taken this love and extended it beyond just our offspring or our mates. And now we use it as a way of making our whole you know, groups that we function in more effective. Thank you for discovering more with us this week. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out the full length episode at one of the windows that pops up. And as always, see you again in next week's train of Discover More. Thank you for tuning in.